What's up guys, I'm Joel Dodge, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about the key differences between Bias FX2 Mobile and the HX Stomp. Let's get into it. So guys, if you didn't watch my video from last week, I would definitely recommend watching that one first because I play through both of these devices. So you can actually hear the differences between the two and it's gonna help you understand a lot of things that I say in this video better. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is just overall sound quality and tone. I wanted to give you a very condensed answer. So of course, this whole video, I'm gonna be unpacking what I'm saying right now. But if I had to crown one of these, the winner in this area of tone and sound quality, I would give it to the HX Stomp. I felt like it had a little bit more like fullness to the sound. I don't know how else other to say it than just that. It just sounded a little bit more full to me. I also think it was a little bit more responsive to the way that I was playing the guitar. But I want to follow it up by saying is that it's a very, very small difference between these two setups, in my opinion. And if you watched my last video, I said, um, at the beginning of the video, I said you might be surprised with the results and that is what surprised me is how well bias effects to compared to the HX Stomp. At least, at least that's what I thought and that's what a lot of you guys seem to think in the comments. And actually, I would highly recommend going to read those comments. It's cool just seeing how everybody had a different opinion about listening to the same samples. And that all kind of proves this point of regardless of which one you thought was better, they are very, very close. Just to kind of express some of my thoughts about the sound quality between these two, um, I remember thinking when I was recording, um, because what I did is I recorded all the parts from one, and then I switched over and recorded all the parts from the other one, right? And I just remember thinking when I was recording that I don't know which one sounds better. And I think that the video, because you're hearing each part back to back, it does kind of highlight the differences a little bit more. But I think that if if you just listen to it and somebody, maybe even if I had told you that like one was the other one, I don't think anybody would have been surprised um, by that because the sound quality is really solid out of both. A few other things I wanted to say is with Bias FX2, I think there's two really big contributing factors to the sound quality I was able to get out of it and well, just am able to get out of it in general. And the first one is the Apogee Jam Plus. I think that this interface is a big component of this setup but with Bias FX2 Mobile sounding as good as it did. Because I've used other interfaces, um, like Focusrite interfaces, iRig interfaces. You don't get the same sound quality out of those interfaces as you do with the Apogee Jam Plus. The second thing that is a really big factor with Bias FX2 is that they've included impulse responses. If you're using a different interface or you're not using impulse responses, you're probably not gonna be able to get tones like I got out of Bias FX2. So one thing I wanted to say before we move on to the next topic, there is one aspect that I feel like was just not even a comparison because one of these devices was so much better than the other in that regard, and that's the HX Stomp with delays and reverbs. The delays and reverbs in the HX Stomp are just so much better than anything that you have inside of bias effects. And that's not to say that bias effects doesn't have, like doesn't have you covered when it comes to delays and reverbs and that you can't get good sounds out of it. It's just when you compare it to like how ambient and full sounding the delays and reverbs are in the HX Stomp, it just really isn't a comparison. If you are big into delays and reverbs, maybe play at church or something like that, the HX Stomp is a clear winner in that regard and they just, it's really no comparison. So I wasn't, I wasn't sure what to call this topic. I'm just going to call it biggest difference. Um, because this is the thing that affects how I feel about these two setups the most. Bias FX2 Mobile has, has no limitations. And what I mean by that is you can add as many effects as you want. You can use two amps if you want to. It's not going to stop you from continually building out a rig, right? The HX Stomp is going to limit you to six blocks, especially when you consider that two of those blocks are going to be taken up by your amp and your impulse response, it becomes very limiting when you only have four blocks left 
for everything that you'd want to use on a guitar rig. This really is one of the biggest differences between the two and definitely makes them hard to compare. Um, I think that was the biggest challenge for me was trying to realistically compare these two things because you just feel so much more limited with the six blocks, if that makes sense. So the next aspect I wanted to talk about is just usability. In this one, there's a very clear winner and it's Bias Effects 2. Having the touch screen, being able to drag and drop things easily, being able to click on specific units to affect how they sound, all of that just makes for a much better workflow. You almost feel like you're making a real board in a certain sense, where with the HX Stomp, you literally have to control everything with the buttons and knobs. If you connect it to a computer, that does make it significantly easier to control, but it's still not as, as submersive of an experience that you get with the touch screen with Bias Effects 2. The second thing that I wanted to include in this part about usability is that Bias Effects 2 actually has so much more MIDI capability. Say if you had a volume control pedal, you could literally set it to any knob on any effect that you have in your setup, right? You're not going to get that kind of control out of the HX Stomp, even if you do have a MIDI controller that you're using with it. It just doesn't allow that, like, that specific of controls. And, which, it's kind of weird to say that, but it... Bias Effects 2 offers you so much more in the way of that. So this section of the video, I wanted to call it best for me. And I just wanted to talk about my personal thoughts and feelings about these devices. So despite of me saying that the HX Stomp does have a little bit better sound quality and tone, just in general, I actually feel like Bias Effects 2 is a better setup for me right now. And there's two big factors with that. And the first one is that I have transitioned to using my iPad Pro as my studio computer. And the fact that Bias Effects 2 Mobile, that I can use it as a plugin inside of apps like Cubasis or GarageBand, it makes it a really well integrated, seamless process for recording guitar. Um, and then when you combine that with how easy it is to change things and how you're not limited to like six blocks with the HX Stomp. Bias Effects 2 Mobile, for me, the little bit of a trade-off you're giving with the tone and sound quality is worth it for everything else that it offers. Something else that I think factors into how I feel about these is that this whole year I haven't been playing live and that's because of the virus, <laughs> you know? Um, and typically when I do play live, I'm playing at church nowadays. When I was younger, I used to play and a handful of different rock bands and stuff like that. But at this point in my life, I mainly play at my church. All the times that I have done things for my church this year, I've primarily been playing acoustic and singing. So um, the only place I've really been playing electric guitar is when I'm shooting YouTube videos and I'm working on my own original music. I do feel like Bias Effects is just better for that. Just an idea, especially after using the HX Stomp that seems really appealing to me is building some kind of like hybrid board where I combine the HX Stomp with like real effects. I would probably do something like put two, two drives before it in a compressor or something and then just use the HX Stomp for like amp simulations, impulse responses, and delays and reverbs. Something like that sounds really cool to me. And the main appeal of that to me, it's actually just that I miss having a real pedal board sometimes. I've been playing in live situations since I was like 17. So that's like 11 years now. You know, back then, if you were playing live, you you would use a pedal board, an amp. There is something really fun about that whole setup and something that just feels, I don't know. I don't know if I would miss it if I hadn't done that, like hadn't actually used those kinds of things when I was younger, but sometimes I do find myself missing the whole feeling of like stomping on real pedals, um, especially for live situations. So guys, I wanted to give you all my recommendations of like who I think each one of these is for. And the thing about these setups is they're made with very different people in mind. And because of that, they really are gonna be better for different people, if that makes sense. Um, so there's three 
main categories that I would say bias effects is better for. And the first two would be beginners and people on a budget. And I just wanted, I wanted to kind of put those together and also say that I think a lot of times when you hear somebody recommend something for beginners and people on a budget, you automatically think that it makes it worse than whatever you're comparing it to. And I don't really feel like that's the case with bias effects too. Um, the reason I think it's better for those people, of course, it is the more budget option unless you have to buy a phone or an iPad to play through, right? The other thing about it is that it's just significantly easier to use. It being a touch screen and you having the freedom to drag things around and move things around. And the other thing um, that I would say just from being someone who's experienced with building real pedal boards and playing through real amps and stuff like that is that Bias Effects 2, I mean, just like the HX Stomp, they both do a really good job of modeling all these different things. And then when you combine that with the freedom that you have with Bias Effects 2 to move things around, to put things where you want them in the chain, to put as many things as you want in your effects series, right? All of that stuff, I think, is going to allow you more freedom to grow, to learn about building guitar rigs. And the other thing is that the HX Stomp, it's not super hard to use, but I feel like if I didn't have all the experience that I have with building guitar rigs, the learning curve of using it would have been pretty substantial. Like I think if the HX Stomp is your first effects unit or is your first introduction to uh, the world of guitar effects and stuff like that, I think that a lot of what you're going to be doing is actually just learning how to use the HX Stomp. Or something like Bias Effects, there's almost no learning curve to it because you literally can drag and drop things on the screen. So I would recommend Bias Effects 2 for beginners, but it's also something that will grow with you. It's something that as you get better at using the effects and you understand how guitar effects work better, that you're just gonna get better and better at using it. I think for a lot of people, you're not gonna run into any limitations to growing as a guitar player, despite of using bias effects. Which leads me into the next category of people that I think bias effects is better for. And I, I think it's better for people that are really concerned about their workflow. When it comes to putting out my own music, working on my own music and stuff like that, I've really been just trying to get rid of anything that is more complicated, I guess you could say. The more that the things I'm using are simple and don't take extra thought on my part to make them work, the better. And with Bias Effects 2, it really is a seamless process, especially people that record their music on iOS devices. There's only really one kind of person that I think the HX Stomp is gonna be best for, and I would say that's a more experienced guitar player that has a specific purpose in mind. But yeah, if you wanted to add this to at the end of a pedal board, it basically turns that pedal board into an incredibly useful, versatile rig. So basically you can record straight through it. You can just use it as an effects unit. So you could actually just send the audio straight to a real guitar amp that's in the room. And then on top of all that, it is super easy to use in live situations. I, I think that if you're a more experienced guitar player and you have like a specific purpose for the HX Thomp, it, it really is the best for that because when you compare it to everything else that Line 6 has to offer right now, you know, the HX Stomp will fit easily on a pedal board or on your desk as an interface if you'd want to use it for something like that. If you want something from Line 6 that's going to be your full board, I actually wouldn't recommend getting the Stomp. I think that you'd be better off getting the Podgo if you're on a budget or if you're not on a budget, getting a Helix. I feel like the Helix is obvious if you have the money for that and you want to spend it on that, it's a great option. But the reason I think the Pod Go beats the HX Stomp as an all-in-one guitar rig is, first off, it has eight buttons and a volume pedal. That is more than enough controls to use that device in live situations easily. Um, it still can be your interface and it has almost all the same effects inside of it. Even though it only allows you to pick four blocks, you don't have to use those four blocks for things like your amp 
and your volume pedal, like things that you're gonna want to use in a live situation. So I do think for most people that want something that's just your all-in-one unit, that the Podgo is just a much better option. So guys, that's all my thoughts about these setups. Um, I would love to hear what you think in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do. But as always, die empty. I'll catch you in the next one.